guys will be starting soon please tell all your friends to join isap so that you don't miss anything Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my Talk 2022, brought to you by Sepstra, the student body of electronics and electrical engineering department. I am Sogum Parandekar, a branch representative in Sepstra, and I'll be your host for the evening. Please call all your friends. This is 
one of the most important decisions which you will be making in your college life so you don't want to mess this up we will start the minor talk now so so we will be talking about two things in this talk one is minor course and second is audit course we will majorly focus on minor courses i'll just introduce what is audit course in the end so what is a minor so a minor is a specialization in a department different from your major discipline that means if you are from a triple e department you cannot take an electronics minor it has to be from a different department if you are from csc department major you cannot take a computer science minor you will have one additional course per semester if you take a minor discipline which will run from third semester to seventh semester and each course will carry six credits but the good thing is these will not be added in the calculation of your cpi so you don't have to worry much on the grades but it is always good to have a good grade right and on your transcript it will appear as major in x engineering which is your branch with a minor in y engineering which will be your minor eligibility and allotment let's talk about eligibility and allotment so minors are allotted on the basis of cpi as you all know at the end of second semester so if you have a very good cpi you can get any uh, minor you want so basic requirement of a cpi of 6.5 and no active backlogs is necessary to be eligible for minor discipline so a minimum cpi of 6.5 and every minor has approximately 50 seats some minor might have 20 seats but majorly they have 50 seats and if the applicants for the minor are less than five in the third semester you know, that minor won't be available so for example if you guys apply now but you have less than five people in total, that minor won't be featuring. So let's talk about minors available and commonly taken. So you have computer science, robotics and AI. You have a new minor introduced for your term, which is data science and AI. Then you have product design, you have mathematics, electronics, language and literature, biotechnology, civil, chemical, and Southeast and Southeast Asian studies. Factors to consider while choosing a minor. So first factor is that you need to remember it will be one extra course added to every semester. That means three classes per week extra that you have for non-minor people. So opt for a minor only if you are interested, don't blindly follow your friends or you will end up giving up on the minor. The best way to make sure is you talk to seniors who have opted, who are currently pursuing that minor. So if you have any small doubts, all your doubts get cleared, not the course doubts I'm speaking about regarding taking or not the minor. Then once allotted you cannot change a minor that is very important to remember that once allotted your minor cannot be changed so make sure you make the right decision you talk to the right seniors but you can drop the minor any on at the end of any semester if you are not interested and the last important point is that if your branch changes then you don't have to worry right now fill the minors according to your current branch if your branch changes later on you get a new form and you can fill the new form according to your new branch you need to panic at that time so we have our first minor which will be speaking about this computer science minor and we have grace madsen with us grace over to you yeah am i audible yes yeah. hey everyone i'm grace madsen i'm from the ec department and i have a cs minor and i'll be talking about it so this is the course structure as soham said we have my uh, the computer science minor courses from the third to the seventh sem and in the third sem we have theoretical foundations of computer science which was online for us and was taken by the ganta goswami sir in the fourth sem we had data structures and algorithms which is half offline and half online and that was taken by sp rao sir then in the fifth sem we will have a course called digital Log logic in computer architecture 
which we ha haven't had. Um, and then the sixth SEM will be computer systems, and the seventh SEM will be software engineering. Next slide. So yeah, the I'll first give you a few general guidelines about this uh, computer science minor and overview. So this will give you again during your uh, intern intern season and uh, placement season because of the knowledge and credibility that it adds to your resume. Uh, it's especially important because uh, for those who don't have a computer science major or an MNC major, then having a computer science minor allows you to sit for some companies which do open for. Uh, minor courses even if they don't open for um, the circuital branches so it also opens up the field of computer science for masters in foreign universities so if you want to pursue computer science but you don't already have it as a major then you can have uh, you can enter the colleges through this minor the cpi cutoff uh, at the end of second sem last year for this minor was around 8.5 8.6 and it varies every year but it generally stays around this um word park. and the time devotion that you need to uh, give to this minor per week is around five to six hours if you want to get a decent grade you um, can learn from online resources and um, other books if uh, because most of the questions do for us did come from uh, resources like that for the fourth sem there was this book called clrs which was very helpful and uh, the professor used to like mostly read from that so if you just um, practiced it before and you already had read the book, then all the questions in the exams were from uh, that book in fourth sem. In uh, third sem, most of the questions were just from the slides. And uh, if you listened to um, class, then you could easily get a good grade. It wasn't that hard. It was kind of enjoyable. Um, but it depends on how much effort you want to put into the course. It's not a course that you can just finish off in the last day. Um, just for the quiz, unless um, you don't want a decent grade. So having a minor in CS, like I already said, adds a positive point to your resume. The DSRCO and OS courses will be helpful for intern and placement seasons uh, because those are courses which are not taught otherwise and are given only to CS and MNC people. Uh, also, another point to note is this course, this minor course, isn't open for CS or MNC because they already have these um, subjects in their regular core courses. The average grade in SEM three and four for us was seven to eight, and um, in STEM 5 and 6, um, our seniors this year had around um, 7 in uh, computer systems and in computer architecture, um, many people even got a 5. So the grading was a little harsh um, depending on the professor. But if you um, do put in, if you're ready to put in the effort, then uh, and you do want to show your um, minor uh, marks on your resume, then, then take this minor. Next slide. So um, the theoretical foundations of CS course for us had two parts, discrete math mathematics and um, automated theory. So the first part um, was mostly um, just logic and recurrence relations. There wasn't a lot of uh, coding in this course. Um, we just were learning um, theory. And um, most of it was just like, practice and um, if you read from the slides and there's a lot of helpful material on YouTube for this course so um, you could check that out uh, if you just put in the topics you will see a lot of uh, helpful material and um, th that's a good way you can score well in this course because they do a lot of questions and uh, that's what was asked in the exam there were not a lot of um, subjective questions it was mostly like solving um, aptitude questions and we had the grading uh, the was based on quizzes and a mid -sem and an end -sem. So we did have a lot of um, tests, and uh, one of them was even surprise. But um, overall, it was mostly from the slides, and if you listen in class, it was pretty pretty chill. Like you could solve the quizzes easily. And the mid -sem and the end -sem, um, also were pretty fine, actually. So the next course was DS and Algo, and um, this. Uh, the first part before midsem was held uh, online, and um, again, if you uh, practice this ELRS book, the questions mostly were like ditto same from that book in the exam. So um, there are online sites where you can get the solutions for all these questions and um, do refer that before going for the exam. Uh, and you can just read the book. Um, the professors usually read from that book in class. The 
this is helpful for the internship, but you will need a lot of practice. It's not just enough to learn the theory. But if you did listen in class and um, were um, actively reading the CLRS, CLRS book, then um, yeah, you would gain a lot of knowledge inside as well. But for this also, you can use a lot of um, YouTube material. Um, that's very helpful. The next course that we'll have this time is Digital Logic and Computer Architecture. So it's relevant for people interested in electronics. And the um, there is a Digital Electronics and Pipelining and Processors, which is uh, important as topics. It doesn't add a lot of value from the placement point of view, but it's interesting to know about it. And it's um, kind of essential. So there's a discussion on uh, architecture of computer hardware, assembly language instructions, memory access methods, etc. So um, all of this is taught in this uh, course and will be taught for us. Um, so yeah, next slide. Uh, the computer systems course uh, has two parts operating systems and uh, communication networks and protocols so for the cs and mnc people these are two separate courses and they are clubbed into one and that makes it kind of tight for us uh, also in the dsn al uh, algorithms course i forgot to mention there was the same case in dsn algo um, they are two courses for the cs and mnc people and for, for us club so that was also pretty tight these uh for com yeah the computer systems uh, course uh, both parts are very important from placement point of view because uh, in placements they do ask a lot of questions based on uh, operating systems so uh, it's helpful to know about that and um, the the last course is the cs minor which is in the seventh sem is software engineering topics like object oriented programming in mysql etc are discussed these also are relevant for placements so yeah it's kind of helpful um overall this cs minor uh, is um, very helpful for the software placement point of view and the grading isn't very great there are other minors where like people normally get nines and tens but that's not the case in this uh, minor but um, yeah it's, it adds a point in your resume and also it um, if you study in the minor it adds a lot of uh, knowledge value as well so yeah that's all i want to say um, you can ask questions at the end what do you saw Thank you, Grace. We'll have a question answer session at the end of this uh, audit, at the end of minor courses and audit courses. So at the end, I'll ask you people, if, if you have any doubts, you can post it on YouTube chat and we'll go through all the questions. As for now, for next minor, from robotics and AI minor, we have Nandini and Sviya. What do you guys? Uh, so good evening, I'm Sia from the Computer Science Department and I'll be talking about the Robotics and Artificial Intelligence minor. Uh, so as you can see, there are five courses, majorly four courses. The last uh, semester is just uh, the project. Uh, so as of now, we've just done the Introduction to Robotics and Mechatronics. Uh, introduction to Robotics is majorly uh, numerical and uh, mechanics related. Mechatronics uh, was more uh, both theory and uh, practical as well. Uh, Next slide. Oh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Uh, so this minor is conducted by the mechanical department and only 20 people are selected for this minor. And uh, we have three, uh, three cl classes every week and uh, one of them is the lab every week. And uh, the major essence of this minor is the BTP, the project which you get, and mo uh, majorly uh, either CS profs or electrical or mechanical profs give you this project. Uh, you can start choosing this from the fourth semester. And uh, the if you're uh, interested in higher studies, then uh, this project can be a very good point in your CV as research exposure is uh, a plus point, obviously, in your CV for higher studies. Uh, right now, for uh, placements and internships, if you're uh, interested in ML, then it would be a plus point, or else for higher studies, it would definitely be a plus point. Uh, also, this is a new minor, so companies may not give you a very high value for this minor. And usually, the CPI cutoff is around 8.5. Next slide. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, it's called robotics and artificial intelligence, but it's more robotics, like more mechanics and electronics rather than AI. Uh, but the projects you get are machine learning based uh, and they're very interesting. So you can learn more about those in your projects. Uh, and only take this minor if you're interested, not because of uh, because of your peers, because uh, there's no, uh, re or new, no use of this if you're not interested, because 
uh, like like as I said, it's not very useful for internships or placements. Only if you are interested, then uh, you should take this minor. And uh, also in the labs, we get exposed to a lot of uh, different robots, then their functioning and then programming. So that becomes really uh, interesting. And um, this minor is not very difficult to manage. Even if you like uh, devote four to five hours a week, that is more than enough. And uh, like majorly, if you go attend the labs, then um, you cover a lot of theory too. So uh, from, a lab, from the labs, you gain a lot of knowledge there itself. And uh, the grading is pretty lenient. Your, the average grade itself is eight to nine. Uh, the professors are very lenient and the TS are also pretty lenient. So uh, the grading is not very difficult. Uh, and second semester, we had VIVAS too, but the prof professors are very interactive. So uh, there's no need to worry about the grade. Now Nandini will continue. Uh, this is how I'm I'll be talking about the syllabus. So yeah, in your third sem, you'll be studying about introduction to robotics. So it's more about kinematics and inverse kinematics of robotic arms. So if you like ME 101, then you'll like this part as well. So you'll learn how the position of a robotic arm changes based on velocities, angles, and what you can say, position of various parts of the robot. Yeah, and in the next sem, you will study mechatronics. So it's more about sensors and actuators and various circuits. And yeah, you will get to read about systems such as hydraulic systems, pneumatic systems. And yeah, so in the third semester, the lab for us comprised of various softwares, which are used to analyze motion of robots. And in the fourth sem, the lab comprised of lab visits. Like uh, we have to go there and we have to perform experiments on various systems. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, so in the next sem, we will be studying about robotic vision and control. So the lab will comprise of various case studies, both numerical and experimental. And yeah, in the next sem, as you can see, we'll be studying about fundamentals of care. So as you can see, the major portion is about robotics and only for the last semester, we'll be studying about artificial intelligence. So the syllabus is basically uh, introduction to artificial intelligence. And yes, it involves laboratory work based on artificial intelligence as well. So yeah, this minor is good if you want a future in robotics. And it is different from DSAI minor because it is more like application of AI in robotics, whereas DSAI involves proper study of data analytics and what you can say, data. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, Nandini. And for our next minor, for a product design minor, we have our next speaker, Veda Prakash. Uh, good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so this is Veda Prakash. I'm from AAA department, and I'm going to be talking about the product design minor. Uh, so here is the core structure of product design minor. In the third semester, we had introduction to design, where we learned about uh, like the history and history of design and architecture and stuff about architecture and how uh, do we follow the process of design thinking uh, in the fourth and it was pretty fun uh, in the fourth semester we studied about uh, like ergonomics and this stuff is pretty theory heavy and people say it's usually very boring but in the offline sem we got to work on a real life product and prototype it in the design workshop. So it was very fun. Uh, and the rest of the courses I am going to like get in my future. So that I don't have much idea about it, but uh, from my seniors, I've heard, I've heard that it's pretty fun. So that's all on the course structure part. Uh, the overview is that uh, like every other minor, you should only take it if you have interest in product design and want to know more about it. Uh, this minor does not give you any edge in your interns or placements and uh, stuff like that. But if you want to pursue your future, uh, like your future studies or your masters in the field of design or human computer interaction uh, in like foreign universities and all, so there it will help you a lot. And uh, the time devotion for this uh, minor is like zero hours a week. You don't have to put any efforts. Uh, you just have to put efforts when there's an assignment deadline. Uh, 
and that is also not like a lot just attend your classes listen to your teacher and it will be all cool uh in our third semester we had shakuntala ma'am teaching us and we had very little classes and uh, yeah she was very very interactive and everyone joined the classes as it was kind of therapeutic for them and uh, they got a break from their major courses so uh, the third sem is very easy and in the fourth semester we had ergonomics which is very theory heavy uh, in the start and in the later half we get to apply that theory into a project so yeah it's 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 a good mind and then um uh, and in, in your cv if you like pursue any minor for example here the product design minor it will add a plus point because you got out of your way from your major and studied something else which adds uh like it's a huge plus point in your cv as well plus uh, this minor uh, will kind of also open you to the gates of uh, design as a good career option as well uh, next slide yeah in our yeah as i said in our offline semester we worked on actual physical products using ergonomic principles and uh, in your future when you go, uh, go to study for your mba or product management uh it will help you a lot there and if you are interested in building your a uh, product or a startup there are a lot of uh, principles and all taught during the course it's not only about design it's also about product so it will help you a lot there as well uh the workload is very very chill you don't even have to think about the minor uh like it just stays there you just have to listen to your classes and everything will be fine you'll score well as well and uh, yeah in our third semester uh we had only two assignments for the whole semester and uh, we just i think gave an hour or so on them and everyone almost got a 10 or a 9 and in in fourth semester uh, as we had to work on a physical product when we shifted to offline semester uh so th that assignment took major uh, like core screen and uh, yeah in that semester also everyone got about 9 or 8 and uh, yeah it's a pretty chill minor don't have to worry anything about it and uh, yeah last year's cpi cut off is was around 7.9 uh, or like you don't have to worry about cpi cut off in this minor if you genuinely interested like you'll get you'll get it as not many people uh, go for this minor so that's all Thank you, Vena Prakash. For our next minor, mathematics minor, we have Akshay with us. Can you hear me, Akshay? Yeah, and my audible. Yes, you are. Ah, okay, great. Uh, hey guys, I am Akshay Bhatmakar from Triple E branch. Uh, today I will be giving you a glimpse of what maths minor has to offer. Um, next slide. so yeah this is the basic course structure uh, for maths minor um i will be explaining about each of the courses in a while uh, yeah so next slide so you can choose a maths minor uh, if you have a general interest in mathematics and love to study the subject uh, then maths minor could be a good choice uh, or if you come from a non core branch non circuital branch then you can choose this minor and this could be a good plus point in your cv as maths minor offers some very interesting courses like statistics which could for example make your life easier if you are preparing for quant positions or data science positions uh, apart from this in general as a problem solver or as an engineer uh, we need to have good mathematical background to build strong and sound logic so this course can come in handy for that as well uh but in general the course structure is heavy and uh, the experience could be similar to your first year mathematics courses like 101 and 102 but uh, the effort that is that you put uh, will be worth it in the end as there are companies as well that are open for uh, cac and mnc uh, both for their majors and minors um about the cpi cut off uh, the cpi cut off is usually around 8.2 and uh, uh it usually varies between 8.2 and 8.3 so yeah uh, next slide uh now over to the course structure uh, 
So in the third semester, we had real analysis. Uh, real analysis was just an extension of MA101 and 102. Uh, 101 and 102 can also be considered as a prerequisite uh, for this course, but the professor was nice. And usually the professors uh, teach the uh, basics, teach from basics, and uh, he even gave us the first week to revise 101. Uh, apart from that, um, I would also like to say add that uh, if you did, uh, if you had bad grades in 101, uh, that was mostly because of uh, you were new to the college and the exam system. So, uh, yeah. But uh, if you have a general interest in calculus or proving things in general, this course could be fun. Uh, now, coming to the content of the course, uh, we we were first taught about spaces, vector spaces. Uh, we defined norm, norm spaces, convergence of sequences, Cauchy sequences, uh, differentiability, continuity, chain rule, um, uh, inverse function theorem, Riemann integration. And uh, apart from that, we had measure theory as well, um, its definition, monoton convergence theorem. And uh, in the end, we, end, uh, we had a brief overview about Lebesgue integral as well. Uh, Lebesgue integral as well. Yeah, right. Uh, Apart from this, the books that were used were uh, NL, Carothar, and Rudin. Um, Carothar has a great set of problems uh, uh, that can uh, give you a deep insight uh, to real analysis. Uh, the course was taught by British, uh, and the teaching in general was quite interesting and intriguing. Uh, the, uh, we had live classes uh, three days a week, and uh, but the attendance was quite low, um, often dropping to six or seven, probably because the course was on a harder side. Uh, we had a mid-sem, NSEM, and VIVA for this course, and getting anything between 60 or 70 percent was uh, more than sufficient to get a 10 in this course. Uh, next slide. Uh, so in the fourth semester, we had mathematical statistics. Uh, it was divided into two parts. Pre-mid-sem, we had probability, and post-mid-sem, we had statistics. Uh, in the probability section, we had uh, uh, property spaces, random variables, random variables, and vectors, uh, the function of random variables, uh, expectation, movements, and convergence in probability. Uh, apart from that, in the second half, we talked about uh, stats uh, and uh, things like estimation, um, estimation of a quantity as a point, as a range, um, often known as point or uh, range estimation, hypothesis testing, errors, um, uh, Neyman, Pearson, Lemma, likelihood testing, um, and we ended uh, in with a brief discussion on regression. So the books that were primarily used were Ross and uh, Hogg and Craig for stats and Ross for probability. Um, apart from this, uh, you can also use sites like probabilitycourse.com, uh, which were a great supplement to these books. Uh, so this was a completely offline uh, course, and uh, the course was taken by Shubhmay Sasser. And the teaching in general was kind of robotic, and uh, we had live classes for three days a week. Um, and apart from that, we had two quizzes, a mid-sem and an sem And the grading was harsh. Uh, most of us scored between six and seven, uh, and the highest being seven. In the coming semester, we have scientific computing, uh, so and uh, modern algebra in the sixth semester, and differentiable geometry in the uh, seventh semester. Now, uh, I've added the course structure as well to have a look. Now, coming to the benefits. Next slide. Uh, some companies specifically allow CSE and MNC uh, uh, people to, CSE and MNC people, and uh, these subjects could be quite advantageous for these person uh, if they are coming from non circuital branches. Apart from that, if you are interested in quant or data science or fintech related positions, it could be quite useful. Courses like mathematical statistics uh, and scientific computing can come um, quite handy if you are preparing, for example, a quant position. Um, and as there are direct problems that are asked from probability in interviews, uh, it could also be helpful in higher studies, uh, helpful for people that want to opt for higher studies, say in data science or stats related fields or if you want to apply for masters in data science, this could be quite handy. Uh, uh, apart from that, uh, this also comes, uh, uh, this also is quite useful if you want to study CS related courses for PG students. Uh, 
the workload in general is on the heavier side and it could be quite challenging to manage with course course subjects uh, but finding the correct balance could be tricky but it is certainly doable uh, i guess that's about it from my side now i will hand over to soham thank you akshay for our next we have electronics minor and we have with us omkar and sufal uh, hello am i audible yes clear okay uh hello everyone i'm subhal i'm from the mathematics department and today i'll be talking about the electronics minor uh, next slide please uh yeah so as you can see um like any other minor course this is a five course program and um, in the third semester we have analog circuits the fourth semester we have digital circuits then electromagnetic field theory in the fifth semester signal processing in the sixth and communication systems in the seventh uh we'll be going into the details of an analog circuits and digital circuits in specific because we have actually done those courses as for um this entire minor program in general i would highly recommend you to go to the course website and read um what contents are included in each of these courses before you make a decision of opting in for this minor or opting out um so yeah uh, could you please change this link okay um so as i previously mentioned uh, the link is provided in this slide so uh, you could either google it or you could access it once the presentation is shared um so as, as per why uh, it would be a good idea to take electronics minor uh, i personally took it because i was interested in electronics and the, uh, and like uh, that in itself is good enough of a reason but apart from that um, the other reasons could be academic uh, if if you want to pursue a masters that would um, require a basic knowledge of electronics then this would be a good idea because uh, you would gain a lot of knowledge during the course of this program and it would also boost your credibility as it adds to your profile and apart from that if you want to pursue a project uh, that is of interdisciplinary nature and it would require an understanding of electronics then again this course would come in handy uh, but that being said um, if you are looking for uh, this course from the placements point of view or from the intern season's point of view uh, then you should know that um all the companies which open for cac and math minor do not open for ec minor uh, but there are some companies which uh, do open for ec minor that come for circuital branch placements uh, but it wouldn't be a good idea to take up this minor if you are not interested in electronics and you are just trying to opt in because you want to sit for cs or mnc placements uh, especially if you felt that uh, e101 itself was uh, quite taxing and it would be difficult for you to take up another course in electronics um so yeah apart from that uh, going into more details about analog circuits which was the course that we had for our third semester uh, harshal sir taught this course and uh, he used a blackboard our um, semester was online so these classes were recorded and uh, when he was like writing stuff on the board he would live stream himself and uh, lecture slides were not provided in this course um also the nature of this course was like you know pretty exhaustive there was a lot of content to be learned so uh, without lecture slides it was like absolutely necessary to take notes in fact like if, if you do not make notes then i don't think any form of respectable preparation would be possible for your mid sense or end sense um so you need to either uh, like make notes yourself in an offline semester or you need to have a friend who makes good notes um and coming over to uh, the assignments which were um, a part of this course uh there were two assignments uh, one before your mid sem and one before your end sem and uh, the syllabus was pretty much the same as your mid sem or end sem syllabus um so if you did your assignment sincerely then pretty much your preparation for uh, the end sem or mid sem was complete and the questions which were a part of these assignments were directly from textbooks in fact sir would give you uh, numbers of those questions in the textbook so you would have access to the solutions you would have access to the questions and um, there were like 10 or 15 questions which is quite a number but if you spend time then it was very much doable uh and sir's teaching style was quite interesting he would like uh, bring up a circuit he would discuss what kind of you know practical limitations he would face because of it and then he would come up with a new design and he would show how this new design counters those uh, drawbacks and how it is actually more feasible so uh that way like it it, it was pretty easy to uh, understand um, these designs uh and as for the course content um uh in your e101 you must have already learned about bjts and about um, a few amplifier designs that are based on bjts 
in um, this course, uh, you'll also be learning about another special kind of transistor called the field effect transistor, which is FET in short, and a few amplifier designs, which are based on these FETs. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for uh, from my side. I'll now be handing it over to Soham, who will be talking more about uh, this minor course. Thanks. Sorry, I Omkar. Uh, hey everyone, thanks Afil. I'm Omkar. I'm from the Chemical Science and Technology Branch. Uh, so I'll begin. Yeah, the quizzes and the mid sem for the third semester course were all subjective. Uh, but the things that sir had mostly taught about all the transistors and different efficiencies in the lectures. So there wasn't much new stuff in the paper, and all the all the questions were similar to the ones done in class. Uh, fourth sem was actually quite easier than third sem. Uh, Manish sir is very chill. Uh, yeah, Manish sir is very chill. And he was quite lenient too. His slides were actually, uh, he provided slides. Uh, the lectures were not recorded, but live doubt sessions were record recorded. So uh, his slides were quite adequate for learning. And also the questions in quizzes and exams were directly from the lectures. Uh, the grading was absolute and the cutoffs were disclo disclosed right at the beginning. All the information about the course was provided early and he had specified it very clearly. Uh, there were also four surprise quizzes that were conducted, but they had very simple questions. If one wa if one had attended the lecture before the quiz, scoring uh, full in the quiz was very easy. We also had uh, two assignments, so it gave us three questions and any one of them was to be submitted. The digital assignments were done in Logisim software and were extremely simple. Uh, even the book suggested by Sir uh, Morris Mano, uh, by, by Morris Mano, it was uh, quite good in revision, uh, quite good for revision and theory. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it about the electronics minor. Also, the next course, Electromagnetic Field Theory, is a course that has a lot of theory, as in they have to uh, read a lot in that course. Okay, uh, so I'll pass it to uh, Sohamna. Thank you, Supal. Thank, thank you, Omkar. We have Dharia with us for our next minor, which is Physics Minor. Totally Dharia. A very good evening, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Daddy. So I am Dhera Agrawal from Tripoli department and I am here to give you insights on physics minor. So uh, do you find quantum physics interesting? Uh, do you want to learn about lasers? Or do you want to find how optical fibers are made and what principle they work on? If your answers to these questions are, if your answer to any of these questions is yes, then physics minor is for you. Uh, the topics uh, the physics minor uh, deals with all these topics. It includes quantum physics, engineering optics, computational physics, laser physics, and material sciences. Uh, next slide. Talking about the scope of the minor. If you want to pursue master's or PhD in various fields associated with physics, physics minor adds a major plus to your CV and becomes more significant if you are looking for for your master's or PhD in, in some foreign universities. Uh, they give a, a very, uh, they give value to the physics minor if you are applying in foreign universities. Also having a physics minor keeps a window open for you to go for the core jobs. Uh, basically in core jobs, they are looking for the, uh, uh, for the people who have done, who have done courses in physics and maths. So having a physics minor gives a major plus for core jobs. Uh, talking about the uh, courses in third sem, we have quantum physics. So quantum physics starts with the basics uh, which you have studied in your course PH 101. And it ends up with covering some of the advanced topics of quantum physics. Uh, Professor Pravat Kumar Giri sir taught us the uh, course and uh, he didn't share the slides. So we need to take notes during the class. Uh, and he took proper written exams. Uh, there were proper subjective written exams, uh, but the questions were similar to the ones uh, which were given in the tutorials. Uh, also, this uh, uh, this course has one tutorial component. So every week we used to have tutorials during our class hours, and the questions which were there in tutorials, similar questions were asked in the exam, and uh, there were no quizzes conducted for the course. Only mid sem, only mid sem and end sem exams were considered for grading, uh, so there was not much to worry. Uh, moving forward, in in our fourth sem, we have uh, optics. So Professor Sunil Khijwaniya sir taught us uh, uh, 
he put in conceptual clarity he tried his best uh, to make the concepts clear to us and to relate with the practical applications of the concepts he taught uh, the curriculum of the course included geometrical optics wave theory coherence interference uh, diffraction and uh, optical fiber uh, though there was no lab a uh, lab component in the course but a uh, professor sunil khijwania took us to his lab uh, and showed some of the experiments so that we could get more clarity on the topics and he also took us to his personal lab uh, and showed us the optical fibers and some phenomena associated with the optical fiber so it, it gave more insights on the topic and it was very interesting so uh, the course was very well taught by uh, professor sunil and if you if you guys liked optics in your 12th uh, class uh, then the course is going to be a fun for you and uh, regarding the uh, regarding the questions uh, which were asked in the exam so the questions were mainly from the topics you taught in the class there were some there, most of the question <clears throat> most of the questions were direct from the topics uh, or the content he taught in the class and uh, for practicing the questions numericals uh, we can uh, so we were suggested to use the books uh, ajoy ghatak and eh and same here in this course also there were no quizzes only mid sem and ex end sem exam were there uh, regarding the workload uh, if you are if you all are attending the classes regularly and keeping track of what's going on in the classes uh, then it will not be difficult to manage the course uh, the workload was moderate and regarding the cpi cut off generally everyone got the minor who applied for the minor uh, since there were uh, there are also 50 seats so you can easily get the minor if you uh, fulfill the minimum requirements like of cpi of uh, greater than 6.5 and other requirements so that's all from my side and i would like to hand over to soham thank you darya and we have jasim with us for language and literature minor over to you jasim am i audible yes yes okay i'm jasim and we'll be talking about the literature minor so this minor is specifically for those who have interest in literature and one advantage i noted about this minor is that it doesn't feel like a college classroom instead it feels like a school classroom with projects and activities and we play dramas and all so uh, we have uh, five courses and the first one is comparative drama and it is taught taught by um, professor devapriya basu so she taught us at first she taught us the history of plays of drama and then she taught us three different plays the first one was uh, oedipus and then sakuntala so from different parts of the world she took different plays and it was it was not theoretical or something it was rather more like involvement among the classmates and just more like a school experience so if you miss school it's good uh then in the next one we had linguistic analysis uh linguistic analysis uh that it was more about the relationship between languages uh and about linguistics about the structure of each languages and the words so i would honestly tell it is actually kind of a boring course but Uh, so can i change the slide okay so it's rather a boring course but i advise you just go through it because the next two courses which comes at film and all are rather more interesting as i heard from the seniors now for this course there is uh, absolutely no cpi restriction because it's not much sought after and uh, grades are not much strict or something we easily get good grades the thing is not more about how much you study each course but rather how what opinions and all you can put in your paper like what like what is your opinion on what aspect you taught you were taught about the play of shakespeare and stuff and most of the people what happened at the fourth sem was the scores wasn't so interesting for our batches for some it was interesting so uh, most of the people dropped the course because of that but so there is a small problem with our course because of that yeah and the teachers are very chill even uh, 
we've heard that we go to CCD and we talk about our subjects with teachers and all. And we even had to create a website by the end of the sem about which contributes the grade of the course. And uh, this course has really doesn't have any value for interns or placement. So only if you're interested in your aspect and all you have to go for this course. That's right. Yeah, you can change the slides. That's it. Thank you, Jason. For our next minor, biotechnology minor, we have Sham with us. Oh, hello, am I audible? Yes, Sham. Yeah. So, uh, hello, I'm Sham from the CSC department. Next slide, please. So, yeah, bio, like, like for the other minor, bio minor also has uh, like five courses. The first course is uh, Essentials of bio Biochemistry, which was uh, taught by Ranjan Tamil, which was online. And the second uh, course was Molecular Biotechnology, which was taught by Grace Daya Jagannathan. And uh, the third is Cellular Biotechnology, then comes Bioprocess Technology, and finally comes Bioanalytic Techniques and Bioinformatics. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, who should choose this uh, minor? So, I let, uh, I personally choose it because uh, I just wanted to explore medicinal chemistry, and uh, bio minor would help me. So, if you have, in, if you want to uh, like explore uh, interdisciplinary uh, fields like biochemistry, bioinformatics, biochemical engineering, and all, so in that case, you could choose this minor. And uh, the probes are very friendly and mutual. So it's like, and uh, we had a flexible method of teaching. Like uh, on the first day of class, they were, they just asked us how, how how should we teach, and we just told them uh, we wanna we want we want you to discuss a lot of research papers and and cheat exam. And in the same in the same scenario, even the exams or like we decided how the exam pattern must be. So it was so good, and uh, we and uh, like uh, like. Like not everyone chooses this minor, so it's like uh, last year it was, we, we were just five people who chose this minor, and uh, like before us, they were, like this minor got cancelled due to due to like as it failed uh, to uh, to play, like, fail uh, failed that fi minimum five number criteria, so that was the scenario, and uh, it's like we just have three members in the class, so it's very interactive, and uh, we we used to discuss a lot, so. And about one and about the grade, it's so linear, and uh, it's like you you easily get a nine or ten if you attend the class. If you attend the class, you would easily get eights. Uh, if even if you don't attend the class, you would get an eight, even if you don't write anything in your class. And next, uh, workload is very lazy. You can just study two hours before the exam, and still you could get good scores in the quizzes uh, and insects. And uh, on, in the third time we just studied about biochemistry and it was like uh, it just covered topics topics based on hormones and enzymes biochemical dynamics energy cycles insulin insulin cycles cycle you know and this was very interesting uh though, though the pro, pro was a bit poor but still uh or like the topics were interesting so it was very uh, it was very good and uh, in the next time it was bi molecular biotechnology so it was thought by uh, Grace now, and she was so good, and she just uh, helped, like she just discussed one research paper every day, and she just taught the con concepts using the using those papers. So it was so interesting, and uh, this uh, this semester like uh, she covered topics like stem cells, then cancer therapy, organ transplantations, then uh, and then there were a lot of other topics. And those were very interesting as you could literally apply those somewhere. And uh, you could uh, do a lot of research in those topics. And uh, about the CPA criteria, there is no CPA criteria as such. It's just uh, you want to pass, you want to get more than six point three just to get a minor. That's it. And uh, yeah, it's just you make sure that you get five people so that this minor gets up to them. Yeah, just in the third semester. And you could drop it anytime. That's all about it. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, Sham. 
so we have a few minus which are there sometimes which aren't there sometimes so i will just present a slide we'll keep on it for five seconds and you can see the names we don't have the speakers because these minus weren't didn't satisfy the five minimum five criteria so one is civil minor Then you have chemical engineering minor. You can find all these details on the website. You just have to search a bit. South and Southeast Asian Studies minor. Okay, so now we'll talk a little bit about audit courses. So what are audit courses? You can audit any course from any department if you have the permission from that course instructor so audit courses are those courses which have only pp or ff so you are either pass or fail there are no credits or grade attached to that course so these are helpful if you want to add a particular course taken in your cv or resume so there you have a key courses section so you can add a course there so for that you have to personally approach the professor you can personally approach if he agrees to do it you can attend his class and it will be an audit course if you don't feel like attending later on we'll get an ff grade but it won't be shown anywhere on your transcript it's just an audit course so this is short and now we are open for questions so if you have any questions kindly post it on the youtube chat section and I will take up the questions one by one and the relevant uh, people will answer all your questions. So if you have any questions, kindly post it on YouTube chat. There might be a delay because there is a delay in YouTube stream. So kindly have some patience. Right, so since DSAI minor is new for this year, so we don't have any person who has experience or any information about any instructor or how the grading is, but you can find the course structure on the website if you want. DSM. Uh, yeah, math we covered math minor, so DSM minor or math minor. So that is up to you if you have interest in data science or in maths. Maths will be core maths. Data science they just cover I guess uh, relevant to data science like linear algebra and stuff. But in maths minor, as we said, we'll cover real analysis, we'll have some finance course also, geometry also, and 
probable core structure of DSAI. So, as I said, visit website. We don't have much info because this is the first time course is introduced and does it matter if you drop a minor after third sem like if you don't feel like continuing no many many people drop minors after third sem there is no problem uh, but it's up to you some people feel that i have worked hard enough for one sem let's continue some people feel like no that's enough so it's up to you but there is no problem as such So if you have any questions, I encourage you to ask them now because I think tomorrow is your deadline regarding any minor we have everyone here with us if you have doubt about any particular minor. I can't see any more questions. So if we are done with the question, I think we can end our session here today. So thank you to all the speakers who were here for taking time and sharing with us all the knowledge. And that's it from Substrum. Thank you everyone for attending. We'll end our minor talk here. Thank you. And yes, we'll share the slides with you. So don't worry about that. We'll send you a mail. So you can refer at any time you want.